So in the last video I talked about these two motors. These are uh, just plain DC motors with an encoder at the back allowing me to monitor the position of the shaft. So the software I'm still writing for this. Um, it's not as simple as I thought it would be because uh, these motors have something called a backlash uh, which is causing a problem for me in estimating their position but I'll um, it's it's something that can be worked out so I'll be I'll be working on the software for this for a little while and uh, there as you can see they're both uh, connected to this motor shield which is uh, attached to this Arduino Uno but uh, in this video I wanted to just uh, document the motivation for this project uh, what exactly I'm trying to do what exactly I'm trying to achieve and uh, why I'm doing this. So this uh, this entire project is obviously about a telescope mount. So I want to be able to point my telescope or my camera. Uh, I want to direct the telescope to a particular star or a planet and I want that telescope to then be able to track that star you know for an extended duration of time maybe a few hours at a time you know for things like deep sky photography and things like that um, where you need extended exposures and uh, you have to you know you, 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 the camera should orient itself to, with the star all the time so that's the that's the basic idea here so let's start by talking about the sky and the surface of the earth so imagine uh, this is some sort of geographical figure on the earth maybe a pair of mountains all right maybe there's a tree or something here right okay so this is the surface of the earth right imagine you're looking north okay so this direction is north so then obviously if that's north right obviously this is east on your right and this is west okay now there is a star in the sky uh, you know everybody knows the earth goes around on its axis right approximately once in every 24 hours so if you're in the northern hemisphere there's a star over here I'm gonna and we know the star by the name Polaris so I'm just gonna call it Polaris all right or the pole star now if you point your telescope at Polaris so let me draw that so I'm pointing my telescope at Polaris not ex this is not exactly true what I'm saying but for the purposes of representing here and just giving a broad idea of what I'm up to this will work so this is Polaris which is the pole star and if I were to point my telescope at Polaris so here's my telescope right so that's pointing at Polaris and as the earth turns on its axis all right so let's draw some other stars so let me draw one star here let me draw another one here and let me draw another one here okay so we have these three stars now because the earth turns on its axis and because Polaris this star is actually really uh, how do you say it it's it's you could for all practical purposes you could say that this star is actually aligned perfectly with the earth's axis so as the earth turns on its axis we, we, we you know everybody knows that the stars rise and set so they rise in the east like this okay and as time progresses they set in the west and all the stars do this at the same angular rate because their stars are fixed in the sky it's actually the earth that's rotating but um, to us it appears as if the stars are actually going around and because Polaris is right near the earth the, the north axis of the earth uh, north pointing axis of the earth Polaris looks like it actually stays in one place which is why it's called the pole star and people use it for navigation and things like that all right um, so the issue is now suppose I want to photograph this star here so right okay how do I get my telescope to track this star perfectly as it goes around Polaris once every 24 hours that's the question here okay and the way to do that 
is by this this telescope mount obviously the mount on which this telescope will sit and uh, we call that a German equatorial mount the one that I'm using is called a German equatorial mount uh, and this is how it works so how it works is this all right now just imagine this is po this is the, this is Polaris okay so if we turn our telescope axis like this at the exact same rate that these stars are going around Polaris we should find that well Polaris actually doesn't move at all so Polaris will always remain in our field of view suppose this is the field of view of the telescope Polaris will always stay in this field of view but if I point my telescope at this star right and I just leave it there where it is then eventually this star will just move out of my field of view and move out like this which is not what I want I want my telescope to follow this at the exact rate that it's apparently it appears to move so supposing now I do something like this now I take my telescope right and I supposing I want to look at this star okay I want to observe this star so I point my telescope this way right at some angular offset so I point it at the star that I want but now it's offset from the north axis can you see this this is the north axis and now it's offset I'm gonna call this angle the declination I'm using these terms a little loosely this is not exactly declination but I'm just gonna call it that because well it's 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 just a loose use of the term so this angle that I'm offsetting from the north axis my telescope is called the declination okay and if I now instead of putting my telescope here I put a mount here All right, so this is a physical mount with a tripod and that's sitting here and I rotate that at 24 degrees an hour so this I'm going to call the right ascension axis RA so for simple purposes we'll just call this RA and DEC okay and again these are I'm using these terms a little loosely but you know you could call it the hour angle you could call this RA also the hour angle it doesn't really matter we'll just call them RA and DEC okay so RA is the amount is the angle that I'm turning the mount axis this is the mount now and declination is the amount that I've actually offset my telescope from that mount axis which is pointing north not just pointing north pointing north at the pole star okay so now this is a little difficult to understand so I'm gonna give us a little visual aid here so imagine that this rounder okay now I know many of you probably call this a compass but uh, in my world a compass is something that uh, you know with a little magnet attached to it that points north and this is called a rounder anyway so imagine now that this pencil that we see this pencil is the telescope all right and this is the mount of the telescope okay so let's first assume that the telescope and the mount are aligned together and I point them north and if I rotate this at the 24 hour rate that the, uh, that the earth is turning you can see this mount this telescope the pencil the tip of the pencil is always pointing at Polaris right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offset this telescope there you go just like I've shown down below can you see this so now I've offset this is the mount axis pointing north this is the telescope pointing at the star and I have offset it by this angle which is the declination okay and now what's gonna happen is right, so if I now rotate can you see this is a rigid angle this declination is now fixed and it's locked the telescope is locked like this but now if I rotate the mount of the telescope at exactly 24 hours rate you can see that if I rotate the mount at 24 hours rate exactly the rate at which the earth is turning you'll notice the telescope because it's fixed to the mount and now is offset by this angle it traces out an arc in the sky can you see that and so what would actually happen is if I you know if I did this right you'd probably see now if I do this you see this is the same thing happening here okay so the star is rising and you can see that it's tracing out the arc of the star as it moves in the sky perfectly you see that so the star would move like this right and now the telescope because of this offset angle is also moving like this because the mount is rotating at exactly 24 hour rate so it's it's easy to think of when you it's easy to picture what's happening when you use this okay 
so now we have the setup the physical setup right where we have the the mount axis which is this and that's turning at the exact same rate that the stars are turning we have the telescope which is now offset okay by the declination angle and that's tracing out the exact path that the star follows so you can see that here like that all right now why would i do this well the star is moving along this path right as far as we're concerned the star is moving along this path it, it appears that way to us because the earth is turning uh, so now my telescope field of view which is this little circle here is also moving at that exact same rate you can see that as long as i ensure that i turn this motor correctly at the correct rate then this telescope will follow that star perfectly all right now why would i want to do this well supposing i want to you know photograph a distant galaxy or a you know a really dim object in the sky uh it's not enough for me to just hand hold my camera or even on a tripod and just point at that object and take a picture. There's just not enough light coming from this object onto the camera sensor, you know, or the camera film that allows, you know, the sensor to detect it or, you know, to, to form an image of it. You know, um, of course, I could use a bigger telescope. And that would bring in more light to the sensor. But telescopes are terribly expensive. You know, the bigger the telescope, the more expensive it is. Uh, in a geometrical uh, relationship between a telescope size and cost. So, and you know, a bigger telescope means it's going to be harder to move and things like that. So, there's got to be a better way to do it. So, the way to do it is if you can achieve this tracking, all right, perfect tracking of the star by ensuring that this RA motor. So this is the RA motor, you can see that. So this RA motor, if you can ensure that this turns at the perfect rate needed for the star, slightly different, you know, maybe for a planet, slightly different for the moon, slightly different for the sun, because they all, you know, they, they, they go around, they appear to move at different rates. So if you can achieve this perfect uh, angular rate that is happening here, uh, you should be able to keep the star in the center of your camera sensor. And instead of allowing just one second of light to come in, or maybe two seconds of light to come in, you can effectively allow, you know, a few hours of light to enter the camera sensor by tracking the star like this and get a bright image of an object that's really, really far away and looks really dim. So that's the, so if you want to photograph galaxies or distant objects um, uh, in the sky, you need a tracking mount. Otherwise, uh, you're not going to be able to do it. Okay. So uh, that's that's the motivation behind this whole project. And uh, there's some other issues. For instance, take for example, all right, let's just assume for simplicity that the Earth goes around the Earth once every 24 hours, right? So that means it does, I'm going to work in degrees here. Internally to the software, I'll obviously be working in radians because computers uh, prefer to work in radians than degrees. But, you know, we'll just work for ease of understanding. We'll do things in radians here. So in 24 hours, the Earth turns about 360 degrees. That's that's not exact. That's not an exact figure, but um, just to illustrate my point, it's enough. So if it goes 360 degrees in 24 hours, that means well, in one hour it'll go 360 by 24, which is about 15 degrees per hour. Right? And we can convert that into a um, some number of x degrees per minute. And we can change that into, you know, which is equal to y degrees per second, right? And if I can somehow correlate this angle, so number of degrees per second, the angular velocity at which I'm going to turn my RA motor in degrees per second, right? And using these motors and the number of pulses that come out from the encoder at the rear end you can see the encoder there so if i can count those pulses i can determine the angular rate of this motor and if i can match the angular rate of this motor with this exact value then i should be able to track a star perfectly um, not only will i be able to track a star perfectly but because i'm also monitoring how much the angle is not only am i monitoring you know this the the angle at which the rate at which this thing is turning but if i keep track of that angle so i you know as it moves i just keep track of how much it's moved like this i can also move the telescope if i want to from one star 
perhaps to another star over here. So I could turn the telescope in RA to track, start tracking this star. And well, see our original star would have been up here, right? It would have moved like this. And then I just reduce the declination slightly, this offset angle, this declination, right? So let me show you how that would work. So I'm, I'm tracking this star now, right? This one, the one we were first tracking. And you know, it's, it's going perfectly. So here we are, and it seems to be tracking the star. But all of a sudden I decide I wanna track some other star. So let's say there's another star here, so this one, and I wanna track this star. Well, I was tracking this one, right? The one on top, because it went all the way around from here. It went uh, all the way around and it's now it's over here. But now I decide I wanna start tracking this star instead. So all I've gotta do, right? is just watch the divider, watch the watch the rounder now. All I gotta do is just reduce the declination angle like this, continue turning in RA at the same rate that I was, something like that, right? And now I'll be tracking this star. So it's not only am I able to track an object once I pinpoint its location in my field of view, but I'm also, if I keep track of the angles that I'm using, so the declination angle, and the RA angle, if I keep track of these two angles, I can then tell the telescope to move from one object to the other, as long as I know exactly what the current declination and RA is, right? I can now tell the telescope, all right, we'll change your declination to so much and change your RA back to so much, and then we'll probably be able to start tracking some star, which is over here. Change the RA, and then again, set it back to the 24 hour rate, so it'll, It'll change the declination, change the RA, find the star. Once I'm satisfied the star is in the center, I'll tell it again, start tracking at the 24 hour rate, and then the declination will stay fixed now, but the RA will change, and it'll do so at exactly that 24 hour rate, and then we should be able to start tracking this star, right? So here's the star over here, and we should be able to start tracking and keeping our field of view. So that's the, that's the entire um, motivation here. And this kind of scope, I guess you would call it a go-to scope, but it's my hope that go-to in the sense I can go to a particular RA and I can go to a particular declination value just by commanding the telescope to do that. So um, usually these kind of go-to mechanisms are quite expensive, I would say in the order of a couple of thousand dollars, um, US dollars, for a, a commercial system to do this. But uh, I'm hoping to get it done cheap, just using uh, two encoder motors. Uh, which probably cost me about, I don't know, uh, how much is a thousand bucks, maybe about uh, $20 or so, you know, 15, 20 dollars for these two motors and the associated hardware. And this is my mount, which you saw earlier. Um, this is a Konus mount, which I intend to mount those motors onto. Uh, this is pretty cheap, actually. I got this second hand for about 150 dollars. Probably less than that, I think. You know, I got it with the telescope, so the mount itself probably about you know hundred dollars. So hundred dollar mount, second hand, a uh, couple of uh, motors with an encoder, and I should be able to, if I get things right, duplicate a you know a, t a go to system which would probably cost me thousands of dollars. So let's see how it goes. Thank you for watching.